We're going to get started now. Um, just want to quickly uh, do a quick sound check again one more time to see if everyone can hear us. Uh, if you can, there is a hand icon in the control panel. If you do uh, click on the hand icon, it will indicate to us that the audio is working. I'll just wait about another couple seconds just to confirm, and then we'll get started. All right, so we'll get started. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for attending our session today. This series of uh, webinars is called the 2016 Midas Complex Bridge Test Drive event. What the focus of today's uh, seminar is, is on teaching and showing engineers the capabilities and the functions of the complex bridge engineering available in Midas Civil. Before we begin, there is one additional thing I would like to mention. It is what we call the test drive event for the Midas Civil uh, uh, promotion for this year, for this term. It is for the new and non-users of Midas Civil. It allows them to chance to use Midas Civil effectively to actually simulate composite bridges, most likely steel. Uh, if you notice, if you go into the website, it will be indicated uh, below. You will see that there is a series of steps and event rules that uh, we are promoting. So as the engineers have a chance to really see the software and get accustomed to how the software is able to go about doing their general processes, uh, they are able to qualify for some additional prizes that uh, we do have for submitting in their drawing files or, their, or um, their own model files that they're able to accomplish in Midas Civil. Once, that, once that's done, uh, we will collect all the results in and we will check to make sure engineers are able to use the software correctly and if it's going to be able to assist them in the general process. And then we'll take a small raffle to actually provide gifts. Some of the gifts are Trials of Midas Civil, Amazon gift cards, as well as a grand prize being a Midas, uh, Microsoft Surface Pro. So if you do have any interest in this, uh, later on at the end, Lucas will direct you to the register icon, so you can actually go into this and check it out yourself. If you do have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us by emailing us at midasoft at midasit.com or giving us a call at 646-852-9286. Uh, again, this is the MIDAS test drive event, and we hope to see you there. Uh, so now we're going to go back into the presentation, and we'll get started. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Vera. Uh, so today uh, we are going to uh, go over the segment of bridge, because uh, uh, this, uh, this is a series of the uh, webinar, so beforehand, uh, I want to briefly uh, go over the uh, so what's the uh, coming up uh, uh, this week and next week. So today, what we're gonna go over is segmented bridge analysis and design. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna do the like high speed rail load. So in here we're gonna go over the what is the what we can do uh, for you uh, through the rail trick analysis model widget. And then the like, uh, you know, like Bella said, uh, we are going to do a big, like, a promotions, a big event for the steel composite bridge analysis and design. Uh, the next one is uh, next week, uh, we're going to do the cable state bridge analysis and a suspension bridge analysis. So uh, those, like, you know, like topics are covered in two weeks. So we prepared this one a lot. And uh, so I hope that you guys uh, enjoy this event. And uh, <clears throat> also people who are not client yet and have an interest in using Midas program uh, can have an opportunity uh, to use Midas for 30 days. Uh, after uh, this webinar, uh, we will contact you to give you guidelines for test drive. Uh, through test drive, we will provide as many as uh, examples you want and lift you up to an intermediate level on Midas Civil. Uh, so furthermore, if you have a any questions during the training, uh, during the webinar, uh, please let us know. So before I jump into uh, our today's uh, webinar, I want to introduce who you are. Uh, we are Midas. So our uh, headquarters is located in uh, Seoul, South Korea. Uh, our company established 
around 1989. Uh, but uh, in the U.S., we came over to the U.S. market in 2005. So it's been around the 10 years. And uh, in the U.S. market, uh, we deal with uh, like a marketing and we do the, like a technical support. We also like communicate uh, with uh, developers uh, to you know develop our Midas Civil and other programs in Midas uh, family program. So throughout the world, uh, we are the international company. Uh, we have the eight branch offices and other like distributors uh, around the world. So you might uh, know the Midas Civil or Midas Gen or Midas FBA because you guys are bridge engineer, but other than that, we also do the like a geotechnical engineering, which is uh, uh, you know controlled by the GTX and or SolarWorks, and also like a mechanical engineers, uh, Midas NFX. Uh, this is the you know like a good program. So our user list is a, this one is a partial list. So uh, most of like a big firms in the U.S. and local firms uh, have used uh, Midas Silver for a long time. Uh, for the big project or small project, but uh, we have around the 30 DOTs in the U.S. have used Midas Civil, and uh, your clients or like a DOT members, uh, you know, you guys are you know, actively use Midas Civil. So, you know, uh, Midas Civil uh, has proven very well in the U.S. market. Uh, this is great program. Uh, the capability is very high, and also about the like uh, analysis tool. Uh, it is uh, like uh, beyond the imagination, I guess. And also, uh, we also add uh, design functions and load rating functions on uh, certain types of the bridge. So you guys will, uh, you know, enjoy uh, that functions very well. So for the uh, first, I mean, for the beginners or like uh, people who came here first, I want to briefly explain what Midas Civil does, you know, work uh, for you. So Midas Civil, we invent this program very customized for the bridge types. So bridge analysis, bridge design, bridge load rating. Uh, but uh, this is a you know, finite element, you know, modeling and analysis tool. So you can do the like a general structures as well, and like a tunnels and uh, something like you know sort interaction so on. So our core value, uh, I mean Midas Civil's core value is we can do uh, superstructures and substructures and underneath of the substructures you have the piles and foundations those can be handled in one platforms so this one we call the all-in-one process so in one process you can model everything about the like a bridges and you can get the result values and we provide uh, some design check and a design functions uh, for you so what kind of the bridge type can my civil uh, handle uh, as you know, uh, like a conventional bridge, there's a covered uh, frame bridge, a slab bridge, and so on. But you might wonder how we handle the very advanced bridge in the U.S., like a stage uh, segmented bridge. Today we're gonna go over this part, and also uh, later on, cable state bridge and a suspension bridge. So these are the uh, few examples, you know, modeled by Midas Civil and completed by Midas Civil. You might know some of the project on here. And also you can see the some like a suspension bridge and a cable state bridge and a very like, you know, like a complex a geometric bridge uh, in here. So, you know, we've improved very well, like Midas Civil, the capability and accuracy, uh, you know, have improved very well. So let me jump into uh, today's uh, webinar. So we're gonna go over the uh, segmented bridge. So what is the learning object uh, today? Uh, first of all, I will open up uh, by you know, questioning like why FEA is required for segmented bridges. And uh, next one is a tip, uh, typical modeling issue so with a finite element modeling. So getting the, you know, like uh, once you build up the model, uh, you know, getting the result values are very easy because uh, you can just, uh, you know, go for, you know, go through the sum of the, you know, uh, clicking icons. But building up the, like a proper model, accurate model is very hard. Uh, there will be a, some like, a, you know, limitations and issues. I will go over that part. And then how might a civil will help you to set up that models. So I want you to have a, you know, like a proper model to run the analysis without singular errors. So I will go over how we provided those kind of services for you. And the next one is in segmented bridge, uh, 
like how might a silver will help you in precise analysis, such as time-dependent material and uh, tendon loss and so on, those kind of analysis, where is the functions, where is the icon uh, you can, you know, uh, used uh, for those kind of functions uh, for precise analysis. I will go over that part. So first of all, uh, why FEA is required for segmental bridge? Uh, as you know, segmental bridge need to be uh, carefully, uh, you know, analyzed uh, because uh, there are, you know, many factors you need to consider, such as construction stages, time-dependent material, and a pre-stressing uh, tendons. So the effect of the pre-stressing need to be carefully evaluated because when the uh, bridge goes to the end, when the construction stages uh, goes to the end, you're like a tendon, uh, the property will be uh, changed. So in that case, how you can grab the moment, how you can get the tendon losses so when the, uh, you know, depending on the uh, construction stages and the depth of the study you are working on. The next thing is, you know, usually segmented bridge, we use the concrete. Concrete is a main uh, material property. So how you can set up the like the time dependent material behavior uh, easily, and how you can apply this time dependent material behavior in your uh, like a segmented bridge. The next thing is that the construction loads need to be considered in analysis. Um, you know, like we, as you know, we uh, have a great tool in the construction stage definitions. But how you can uh, you know apply to your construction load such as erection load, like a crane load, and other like a secondary structure load, those kind of things, how you can apply easily in MITRE Civil, and how you can generate those construct complex construction stages uh, through the wizard. So first of all, uh, what is a typical, typical modeling issue uh, with the FEM? So you might see many taper sections uh, when you have the gutter boxes on here. Uh, the depth of the gutter change from the mid span to the mid port, which require creation a uh, creation of several cross sections along the length of the gutters. So along the like the length of the gutters, the sections are changed. So how you can change how you can set up a uh, that model, and even after the model, you might want to check the the change in mono, mono, moment of inertia and area and section module so on. Those kind of you know values you know came out properly or not. Uh, those are the very critical points uh, when you model those like taper sections. So the first thing is how you can easily model the taper sections, or the second thing is you can whether you can get the you know correct uh, like a result values such as moment of inertia or area or like a section modulus so on. Uh, the next thing is a a large number of pre-stressing tendons need to be modeled. So like a, depending on the construction stages, you might have the different uh, tendon profile, and you need to activate or deactivate the, some of the tendon profiles. And as you can see on this configuration, there are tons of like pre-stressing tendons. So how might a civil can uh, handle those like numerous, uh, you know, pre-stressing uh, tendons? Uh, how we can quickly generate uh, those tendons uh, in might civil? And like I said, tender must be defined in individual stages uh, as uh, they appear in the bridge. So as you can see on these bridges, so when construction stages goes to the end, there are more and more like a tender uh, profile will be generated and it should be in, uh, you know, like inserted on like the gutter sections. So how you can define those like you know, new tender profile generation depending on the uh, different construction stages. Those are very hard if you, you know, like, because there are a lot of, you know, tendon profiles. So how you can, you know, like define those parts, you know, efficiently uh, to shorten your time. The next thing is uh, individual construction stages must be defined depending on the construction types. So when you think of segmented bridge, uh, there are uh, like a one, like a huge, like a construction, uh, I mean, concrete sections. A one shell or two shells, but usually we use a one shell. And uh, the sections, like you know, section shape is you know typically is already defined. It, but depending on the, your project, depending on the situation around the bridge, you might have a different construction uh, method. So 
not only just uh, creating model, uh, but also uh, through Maira Silver, you can uh, you know uh, define the construction stages in widget. So which uh, you know shorten your time you know a lot. So what types of the construction uh, what types of the construction method we provide uh, for you? So first of all, um, the uh, balance Kent River Bridge. So excuse me. The main advantage of uh, cantilever bridge is that support is required uh, only one side of each cantilever. So simple column can be used as uh, support structures such a bridge do not require first work such as temporally supporting st a structure during the uh, construction uh, except for the uh, pier. However, uh, during the engineer work, you might have a hard time to defining all those erection load uh, depending on the different construction stages. So how we can consider uh, this like a balanced cantilever bridge? Uh, so we have uh, one like a wizard functions uh, cover the uh, balanced cantilever bridge uh, construction method. The next thing we provide is uh, incremental uh, launch method. So the incremental uh, launch method will never become the most economical procedure for construct uh, constructing all bridges. Uh, however, this uh, method may often be the most reasonable way to construct a bridge over an inaccessible uh, or environmentally protected obstacle. So, while you are using Midas Civil, uh, like uh, you know, you can define this one uh, manually, but we have the widget to like define these construction stages uh, in one widget. So we have one like incremental launch method widget in Midas Civil. And uh, span by uh, span constructions, uh, uh, there is no need for first work to support the deck uh, in like a span by span construction. Uh, you know, during the uh, like a casting in the span area, so like a deck's uh, segments are cast in casting yard, hence improving concrete quality control and uh, you know formwork. So also for the uh, span by span uh, construction. Uh, it's not that popular yet, but we have uh, this construction method uh, can be you know, dealt in Maida Civil through the widget. Also, like a temporary support, like a fully, you know, showing uh, uh, like a construction method, so on. So about the temporary support, like uh, you might have, uh, you can define the DOF of temporary support, and you can activate or deactivate those temporary support. Or when uh, I mean the, according to the different construction stages. So, how might a civil will help you to set up uh, the model? The, uh, as I summarize uh, what I have you know, talked so far, uh, use a wizard uh, to do the modeling, and a wizard automatically create uh, first geometric model of the bridge, and a three D tendons. Uh, you know, can be automatically generated, and also, more importantly, you can uh, have the construction stages uh, generated uh, in a widget. And also, in more specifically, in construction stages, uh, depending on the, your construction stages, you your like a construction load in construction stages are automatically defined on here through those uh, four widgets. So. Uh, I explain about the uh, balance canter river bridge and uh, incremental launch method and a span by span and um, like uh, you know like a fully support uh, fully shoring uh, method or partially shoring method. You can use those kind of widgets and you can get the model. Plus, you can have the uh, the construction stages uh, information on here. So let me briefly quickly go over the uh, the widget things. So first, what I'm going to go over is the Balance Canter River Bridge widget. So you can see on here, uh, like in this widget, in configuration, the first thing is you define the material, definitely there will be a concrete, and the number of the pier in the bridge. And then define the number of the stages, how many construction stages you want to use in this project, and the method of, method of the construction, uh, casting place or precast. 
and then you like a segment uh, seg uh, seg uh, like a you know like a divide some of the segments uh, on the like balance country river uh, bridge. So define the number of the joints as you can see on here, like a B and a H and a C. Those kind of you know like a parameters you have to define on here, and a peer table and a peer height and define the connection element. So those kind of things can be uh, text input in the uh, balance cancer uh, balance cancer river bridge widget. And next thing, moving on to sections, you can define the, those sections. Uh, like I refer to uh, this like a uh, parameters on here. And lastly, you can define the like you know uh, tandem profile on here. So so in this widget, you define the like a uh, gutter sections. And uh, materials and a construction stages and a tandem profile on here. And also, last thing is uh, the effective width uh, scale factors. So we already have the code on here. If you have your own like values, you can enter those numbers. But usually, I will usually use a uh, effective width scale factors uh, by just uh, you know select the extra LRFD option on here. And then, uh, like outside of the widget, uh, how you can you know modify or how you can generate uh, your tandem profile. So if you don't use the uh, segment or bridge uh, like a widget, uh, how you can generate? What is the plan B for the uh, you know generation of the complex tandem profile? So we provide uh, like these functions as a, like a two D and a three D. So for 2D, what does mean is if you have the XY coordinate and XZ coordinate, uh, you can enter those numbers and you can create the uh, 3D uh, tandem profile. And then uh, if you know the coordinate XYZ for the tandem profile, you can simply uh, copy those like uh, coordinate uh, for the 3D uh, at the Excel and uh, paste into these uh, boxes on here. And you can get the tandem profile uh, on here. Or if you have your AutoCAD file, AutoCAD or uh, 3D uh, like a tandem profile, also you can import these uh, lines on here. But beforehand, you have to uh, adjust where you're gonna put. Uh, where is the starting point of the, this uh, each tandem uh, AutoCAD uh, like uh, line information uh, in my civil. So you can. Put this uh, like you know tandem profile really easy by using the uh, AutoCAD on here. And <clears throat> you might have a hard time to uh, like uh, create uh, the taper sections. We have the function which is called auto taper uh, taper generation. So as you can see, uh, you can just uh, tell the what is the point, what is the like important point, such as you know contraflexure point or like a peak point and then uh, you tell the program what types of line uh, for the taper sections which is curved line it could be a curved line a polynomial or just a linear or uh, you can select it and a program will you know, automatically calculate the taper sections uh, for you and next the visual thing is a span by span of construction method so here uh, this is a very similar uh, like a procedure, uh, you know, like a, with uh, the balance canter river bridge. So define the type and define the number uh, and the material of the bridge. So define the material properties and uh, tell the program what is the span information, which is curved. You can, as you can see here, you can turn on the this box and you can enter the radius information on here. And uh, it's the same. For the sections, you uh, like put the some like uh, dimension uh, on here, and you can get the like uh, concrete sections on here. And also for the uh, at the web, there is some like uh, inflection point and uh, something like a curved uh, lines. Uh, a curved like a tandem profile could be uh, at the web. So in that case, uh, you can just tell you can just fill up the, those parameters, and you can get the uh, like a curved uh, like tandem profile at the web and an incremental launch method uh, this one is the same uh, similar uh, you know define the bridge geometry 
and a material and number of the span. And here, uh, this one will be kind of different set of the uh, defining the tendon profile, but it's a kind of similar. So you, as uh, you can just uh, refer to this configuration, and you can just enter the, those tendon profile uh, on here. And also, I explained the web uh, tendon profile. And uh, the good thing about the uh, the wizard is uh, you can set up the, your construction stages in this wizard. So you don't really need to you know go back and forth, and you can you can just uh, you know based on the information you are uh, typed in the widget, and you can create the construction stages uh, on here. And so far, uh, what I have done is I uh, explain about the the typical modeling issues and how MySQL can handle uh, those like modeling issues. The first one was uh, taper sections. So as you, you saw, we have the auto uh, taper section generation functions on there. And then the construction stages informations. Each widget, we, it contains the construction stage information uh, input. So you can enter those numbers, construction stages, and the segment, like length, and some of the parameters uh, you can, you know, like uh, get the construction stage information really easily. And also tandem profile. So each uh, widget, each different construction method, we have the, uh, like, uh, you know, we have the auto generation of the uh, tandem profile on here. So, so far, all the like modeling and construction stage information already we put uh, in MySQL. So after that, uh, how MySQL will help you in precise analysis? So first of all, you need to think about the uh, the time dependent material. Uh, like a strength. So here, as you can see, uh, depending on the time, uh, you can see there's some different compressive strengths. And this one, definitely concrete. So you can just select the code on here. And then you click OK. And you can generate the uh, time dependent material uh, for the compressive strengths uh, in like concrete. The next thing is uh, we need to consider the creep and string case as well. Uh, especially this is a uh, like a concrete material so this one also we uh, give you the uh, the quote the information on here so as you can see here uh, depending on the time you don't really need to enter those values individually so you select the edge though and you set up some parameters and click OK and you can get the crib and shrinkage like a curve on here and uh, as you know, uh, always, not always, but like a consideration of the secondary effect of pre-stressing is important. So MIDAS civil uh, can consider the uh, secondary effect of the pre-stressing. Because uh, uh, generally, uh, MIDAS civil, we have the tendon loss uh, like a functions, which give you the information, uh, each different construction stages, how much tendon uh, you know, have been lost. And uh, a tandem, like uh, some of the tandem forces have been lost uh, depending on the construction stages uh, due to secondary effect uh, in the like um, stage uh, post tensioning. The last one is uh, soil structure interactions. So soil structure interactions after you model the superstructure and substructures. And as you can see here, you have the foundations and you put the, some piles. Uh, you know, you know, you are the uh, designer, so you know how much like you know parts you want to put, and how uh, you uh, define the like a soil property on here, depending on the uh, like a, dif a different layer, a uh, different like elevation of the ground, uh, you can put the, those uh, soil property, and you can complete a bridge models. And uh, as you know, like a deflections, Campbell value, uh, to know the Campbell value is very important. Uh, you know, during the construction stage uh, sequencing. So this kind of, you know, exact number, initial tangent displacement to erect the structure, uh, which means, you know, like actually uh, when the one node is, uh, you know, influenced uh, by the some uh, load, there will be some like a node will be uh, the rotated a little bit uh, with uh, these angles. So this kind of accumulative, uh, like a deflections, uh, can be you know 
found in my civil. So once you once you complete your bridge model and once while you are doing the design this bridge model, you can get the exact uh, Campbell values. Like I said, uh, we provide a comprehensive tendon loss table. So <clears throat> when the secondary effect you know taking place, you might see the some elastic deformation loss, and uh, you can see the when the jacking stress uh, is applied at first time, you can see the immediate loss, and also due to the like a concrete prevent shrinkage, uh, your tendon uh, like forces loss and also relaxation loss. So those like a table is provided for you. And you can get the like a summation of the tenders on each different construction stages on here. So um, it's very uh, you know like a segmental bridge is very uh, you know complex. Uh, it requires the complex complex construction stages and a modeling information, and tendon profile informations, and those kind of things should be you know considered uh, at the same time while while uh, you are designing your, uh, you know, segmented bridges. So I will just turn on the A video, which one has a from the scratch, uh, like uh, one of our engineer uh, set up the bridge model, and uh, he put the like uh, tendon profile. It will give you idea how you can put the tendon profile manually. And at the end of this video, you will see how he used the widget. He will go over the some of the uh, widget how you can use this one. So. After you watch this video, and if you have any questions, if you guys are our users, uh, like uh, please let us know uh, uh, what you can understand. And also, if you're not users, uh, if you have uh, something like questions about this, like uh, you know, a uh, webinar, you are feel free to uh, you know ask us as many as many questions you want. So. This is the box cutter that uh, we'll be modeling today, and uh, it's a very simple bridge. Uh, basically, I wanted to highlight the construction uh, staging of my disable in this example. So I chose a relatively simple example that is uh, simple enough to uh, create, but uh, at the same time, you are able to understand the construction sequence or uh, construction staging concept in my disable. So this is the layout of the uh, uh, presentation or the training session today. So I'll be starting by defining materials and sections. Then from scratch, I'll start creating the geometry by creating nodes and elements. And then we'll apply time-dependent material properties to it. After this, uh, I'll apply the boundary conditions and apply loading onto the structure. Now, uh, while uh, applying the boundary conditions, I'll also create some boundary groups in which the boundaries will be assigned and then they will be activated during the construction stages. And same thing will be done during the definition of uh, uh, various static loads onto the structure. This is how the construction sequence is laid down. Uh, that first construction stage, uh, we'll begin the uh, day one with the piers and abutments already in place with an age of 30 days. That means they have been cured for 30 days. And then um, this particular stage, CS1, will be of 21 days. We are giving 7 days for putting up the formwork and 14 days for setting off of the um, concrete uh, because the segments are cast in situ. Then stage 2, uh, the segments are activated with an age of 14 days and they are cured for uh, the next 14 days. So uh, this stage two will be of duration 14 days. Then once the uh, segments are uh, cured and the concrete has uh, gained its strength of uh, uh, characteristic strength at uh, 28 days, uh, in stage three, it's just a, uh, a one day duration where we'll be uh, applying post tension tendons onto the structure. And final stage will be of 10,000 days where the uh, tendons will be first crowded and then self uh, superimposed gel loads will be applied onto the structure. And the reason we are having this uh, stage as uh, uh, 10,000 days is we want to consider the long term losses onto the structure considering the creep and shrinkage. Then we will quickly do the analysis and uh, go to the uh, results. So this is how our uh, bridge uh, looks like in the overall layout. 
it has two spans and a 35 meter each and then there's a very uh, slender column in, uh, underneath it which, uh, which is 10 meters in height and so and this is the box section that we will be modeling today and this is a visual representation of the construction sequence so stage one as I said we'll start with uh, the uh, abutments and pier already in place SG stands for structure group BG stands for boundary group and LG stands for load group so the entire model can be divided into three parameters structure which comprises of all the elements and nodes boundary group which comprises of all the boundary conditions including supports and link elements and load group which comprises of all the loading conditions so uh, it's a complete 4D analysis where the three dimensions that is the loading uh, boundaries and structures are brought together against time so in CS1 we'll assign some duration and activate certain boundary group uh, uh, sorry certain structure group with certain boundary groups and certain load groups in the first stage now then comes the next stage we'll activate the structure group corresponding to span then come the next stage we'll apply the post tensioning strands and the uh, final stage we'll apply the superimposed dead load structure onto this uh, onto the structure so basically what all things we have activated in the first construction stage will be carried forward to the second construction stage then it will be carried forward to third and fourth and so and so forth and um, if you want to use some temporary boundary conditions then you can apply them uh, in a given construction stage and then take it out during the uh, uh, whenever they are like taken out from the uh, uh, real structure let's say for supporting this span if you had several uh, temporary supports you can uh, model them right here and then uh, take them out uh, once you are doing the once you have done the post engineering but I have not uh, uh, gone into those details and try to keep things simple for the first time so uh, I'll uh, come back to this slide once we start doing the construction staging and let me start with the basic model so this is how the MySQL window looks like. It's a new model I've opened and I'll right click, go to the properties and material, click add to define the material, concrete and ASTM and I'll select 6000 PSI grade concrete. I'll click apply, then I can select steel material, I can go to ASTM standards and select a416270 low relaxation strands and then click OK. So in this way I can define materials and similarly I can go to sections, I can click add and go to precess concrete section or PSC sections where I can choose how many cells are there onto the uh, sections so uh, I want to have a single cell or two cell I can three cell, n cell, as asymmetric sections, value type section so there are various uh, parameters you can choose from you can enter the name of the section and then the dimensions but to save some time what I'll do is import this section from the previous uh, project that I have so I'll click on import and from a, a previous project where I've already used uh, the similar section I'll import it from there this previous project file has two sections defined one is box section one is peer I'll import both of them I'll click OK and now if I double click on the box section you can see the dimensions as shown here and I've used a, a section offset as center top so if I click on display centroid you can see the section offset as center top uh, the reason of uh, choosing section offset as center top is uh, for define tendons it becomes easier uh, to control the geometry if you have a reference point at the top or the bottom uh, and especially when you're using some kind of tapered sections uh, the use of uh, section offset makes all the more sense 
because defining tendons uh, with varying depth will become uh, uh, quite cumbersome. But uh, here we are not dealing with uh, tapered sections. But anyways, this is a uh, is a fundamental approach for box girders because most of the time uh, when uh, you are dealing with uh, let's say balance can lever bridge, uh, then you are most likely to use tapered box girders. I'll close this dialog box and also show you the pier sections. As you can see in this bitmap image right here, it's a solid round. And if I double click, you can see the dimensions as well. I'll click close. Now I'll start creating the model. And as you can see at the bottom in the status bar, the units are the imperial unit system. I'll switch them to SI unit system since for this project, I have the dimensions in kilonewtons and meter. Then I'll right click on the model view window and select nodes and select create nodes. And under create node, I'll create a node at the origin. Click apply. Then you can see the node created right here. And I'll use select single to select this node. And then right click go to elements and then go to extrude and here I'll select the material as C6000 uh, section as box girder and translate them through equal distance in the x direction as 35 meters and repeat it two times and then I'll click apply the moment you do that you'll see that uh, the entire bridge created and from here onwards I'll start modeling the supports and piers. Then I'll use single select tool and select the three nodes that are, uh, that are created. I'll right click, go to nodes and translate them through equal distances that is in z direction as minus three meters because that is the depth of the box girder. Click apply. So you can see the nodes are created right at the bottom of the girder where the actual bearing location is. And then I'll do single select and select the node number 5 and generate a pier underneath it. For this I'll right click elements and go to extrude and this time change the section shape to pier and the distance will be 0, 0, 0, minus 10 meters and repeat it just don't and I don't want to like replicate it so I'll just say once and click apply so as you can see in no time the bridge geometry is ready now we'll go ahead and define the uh, time dependent material properties. So I'll click close here, right click, go to properties and select time dependent material creep shrinkage. Then I'll click add and here you can see you can enter a name. I'll use the name as C6000 and then I can select a code based on which I want to uh, define this material behavior. So as you can see, we have CBFIP 1919, uh, sorry 1990, 1978, ACI, PCA, Combined, Ashto, and other uh, European Indian standards. Along with this, we also have a user-defined feature which allows the uh, engineer to have uh, more control over the uh, concrete material property for creep and shrinkage. And uh, if you have a given set of uh, data, uh, you can go create your own. Uh, curves for uh, creep and shrinkage but uh, as we know CBFIP uh, code gives the best uh, simulation or best results for creep and shrinkage for concrete material I'll be using uh, this code and here I need to enter the characteristic compressive strength of the concrete and uh, uh, to be honest with you I have no idea how much C6000 or 6000 PSI is equal to in kilonewton per meter square. Uh, 
So what I'll do is just quick, uh, quickly close this dialog box, go to the status bar, change the units from uh, to kips and inch, then right click back to properties, time dependent uh, material creep and shrinkage, click add and enter the material name as C6000, the code being CBFIP and I definitely know it is 6 KSI, characteristic strength of this concrete at the age of 28 days, relative humidity being 70 days and sorry 70% and notational size of the member, I'll use any arbitrary value for the timing, let's say 12. This notational size is actually the uh, volume to surface area ratio and the definition can be found uh, as, and the formulation can be found here and uh, this rotational size is usually used for CBFIP if you choose uh, some different code you will see volume to surface area ratio then uh, you can select what type of cement you are using and what's the age of concrete at the beginning of shrinkage and then if you click on show result you will see two curves the first one is creep coefficient against time and then shrinkage strain uh, against time now what happens is uh, when you define a construction stage with certain duration and when the member is activated with a given stage, the program reads the corresponding creep uh, uh, coefficient and shrinkage strain values and then use it uh, in determining the stresses uh, or the secondary effects in the construction stage. So these curves are quite important to determine the uh, behavior of your structure. Then you can click uh, OK and close. After this, I'll right click again, go to properties and go to time dependent material, compressive strength. Now here I'll define the gain in compressive strength, so I'll click add and enter the name. Let's say uh, C6000. I'm using same name for different type of materials, and uh, but you can uh, completely uh, feel free to go and define any name you want that suits uh, you better. You can write compressive strength, you can write uh, uh, anything uh, except my name of course. So uh, you can uh, generate uh, the curves as per different codes as per CBFIP and here you can enter uh, the mean compressive strength. Uh, this is a, a, a point you should pay attention on. Uh, since we are using the code as CBFIP, uh, you can uh, you need to enter mean compressive strength which is not the characteristic compressive strength. FCK is the characteristic compressive strength uh, in that you need to add uh, delta F which is the standard deviation. So uh, I'll enter that value so 6 is my characteristic compressive strength plus 1.166 which is the standard deviation for concrete. Usually it is 8 MPA or 1.166 KSI and then you click on uh, redraw graph and the program will show you the gain in compressive strength curve as per CBFIP. So the program knows that your characteristic strength is still 6 KSI but uh, your uh, mean compressive strength will be 7.1666 uh, KSI. Then I click OK and close. So once we have defined these curves, we can be, and you can see they are blue in color, this means that they have not yet been assigned to any material property. So I'll right click, go back to properties and go to time dependent material link. Basically this is a link that through which we'll associate the creep and shrinkage curves that we defined, the gain in compressive curve that we defined with the actual material that we are using. And then you just need to click add modify and then so you can see the grade C6000 that you are using will follow this creep and shrinkage and this compressive strength gain curve. Then click close. Now if you re remember for creep and shrinkage we use uh, the notational size for the timing is 12. But uh, clearly our box girders and our peer have different notational sizes. So the program provides an option of auto calculation of these uh, values. So you can go to properties, go to change element dependent material property, click on select all. So the program will select all these sections that are there and uh, check, uh, uh, confirm that the selection is on auto calculate and the code is CBFIP. Then you click apply 
and close so the program will calculate uh, the notation size for each and every member that is there in the structure and then replace uh, this value for uh, replace this value for uh, the computation of uh, creep and shrinkage at the given uh, point of time during the analysis and um, for this purpose it was easy for us to compute the entire uh, uh, volume surface area ratio and just use it for once because it's a uh, symmetric and uh, uniform or prismatic section but if it was a taper section where the rotational size or the volume to surface area ratio is varying, then uh, you can see this feature has a clear advantage. And if you want to verify what is the actual notation size, you can right click and go to tables and you'll see that the actual notation size for these members is 17.87 and 29.53. Click close here and so we have defined the time dependent material effects now we'll move on to define the uh, supports so right click go to boundaries and then go to supports so uh, now we'll start defining the boundary group name as well and assigning the properties to them so I'll click on this button with three dots enter the name as let's say uh, peers and uh, abutments and click add then close basically I'll, uh, uh, I'll use just one boundary group to uh, represent all the support conditions uh, the reason being I'm activating all the boundary condition at the same time in the structure if I was supposed to activate different uh, uh, boundary conditions at different time intervals then uh, I would need different boundary groups so if you can uh, if I bring back that slide so you can see that I'm activating boundary just uh, in the first construction stage after that there is no more boundary groups are activated and uh, similarly uh, all the things that I've, I'll be activating in one uh, shot in one construction stage I'll be using uh, I'll be putting all those elements in one group so I'll have one group for peer and abutment which will have the peer element and the abutment nodes uh, then I'll have a different uh, structure group for span because I will activate this in a different construction stage and if you see the loading uh, uh, load groups they are different like sulfate is activated in the first stage so it's different I missed out a diaphragm load in uh, construction stage 2 which will also fall in a different load group then in construction stage 3 we will uh, enter the post tensioning so it will uh, have a different load group and similarly for superimposed dead loads so a number of uh, groups depend upon how you want to uh, how and when you want to activate uh, the uh, loading boundary groups or uh, uh, structural elements in different construction stages so I'll select that boundary group that I just defined I'll have a fixed support at the base of the pier so I'll restrain all the degrees of displacements and all the degrees of rotation and select the node at the bottom of the pier and click apply then I'll select the nodes for the support or the bearing nodes where I'll have I'll release all the rotational degrees of freedom and it's an expansion bearing so I'll release uh, dx also and just have dy and dz restrained and click apply and now I'll right click go to property as boundaries and select rigid links in rigid links uh, I'll be creating uh, the master and slave node behavior throughout the structure and I'll select the boundary group first then I'll select the master node as the uh, node where the support is applied and the slave node which is directly above it it will be a rigid body connection and I'll copy the links along y-axis and uh, the distance will be in uh, meters so what I'll do is change the distance from inch to meter very easily and distance will be 2 at 35 meters and then click apply so you can see the program has created the rigid links right there if I switch to a wireframe geometry you can see it more clearly So you can uh, 
from here appreciate that the unit systems are no longer a limitation with this kind of software. You can switch the unit systems as many number of times you want and uh, there's nothing uh, like you have to stick to a particular unit system for a given project and change everything based using a calculator manually because the program will take care of it. Now I click close here and go on to define the structure groups as well. So I go to the group tab and you can see the boundary group that you created is right here. I right click on the uh, structure group tab. I click on new with three dots. Basically if, I, if you click new, you will just be able to define one structure, one group at a time. So you can define the group as like peer and abutment. Then I will right click and then again click new and then I can define the next group which is uh, span. So then, but if I uh, click new with three dots, I can define multiple uh, structure groups in the same time. So when you just need to add one or two here and there, you can just right click and select new. Now I'll go ahead and define the uh, the elements that will comprise uh, the structure groups. So I'll select the span and uh, click on the span group, drag and drop it over the screen. And uh, if I double click, you will see the element selected. And uh, since uh, I'm activating the peer assembly and the abutments in uh, in first construction stage. So I'll select the nodes that are corresponding to peers and abutments and put them under the peer and abutment structure group. Now having done this, I'm ready to define the uh, loading uh, data onto the structure. So for this, I'll create the load groups. So right click on the load group, click, uh, click new with three dots and enter the name as self weight SW. Um, then I'll enter STL for superimposed dead loads. Then I'll enter uh, diaphragms. Then I'll enter PS for uh, pistons. Uh, post tension and click close. So I've got four uh, load groups right here. Now I can go to load tab and select static load cases. And now here I'll enter the name of that. I'll define the load cases, self weight, and I can select the type of load case I want to have. I can select uh, either uh, based on the uh, code specification that this load has to be a TC type or DW type or if I want to see the effects of this kind of loading only during the construction stage and not uh, in the post construction stage then I can choose uh, that type of load to be construction stage only. But for the timing I'll stick to uh, the standard uh, specification that is sulfate as DC, STL, will be for building surfaces, so, uh, so DW, um, diaphragm, it can be DC, and then PS for pre-stress, and I'll select PS from here also, then click add. Then I click close here. So I've defined all the load group. I've defined the load cases. Now I'll uh, assign values to these load cases. So right click, go to loads and select self weight. Now I'll select the load case name. I'll select the load group name and I'll select the factor in a given direction. So along uh, Z axis minus one is a multiplier for gravitational direction. And then I'll click add. This way I've defined the self weight. Then I'll right click, go to load and select nodal load for defining the diaphragm load. I'll select the load case name as diaphragm, load group name as diaphragm, and then I'll enter the value. And uh, I have this value with me in kilonewton, so I'll change the units from kips to kilonewton. And this value is minus 850 kilonewton. And then I'll 
using the select select the node on which I am applying it and apply it vertically. Having done this, I'll right click again, go to element uh, sorry go to loads, and there I'll select element beam load and select superimpose dead load as load case name and load group name and I want to have a uniformly distributed load onto the structure. You can choose whether you want to apply that as a, at an eccentricity or at the centroid location. If you uh, check this option off, the loading will be applied at the offset location which is uh, where you have created your center uh, section offset. Which in this case it is the section top or the center top and I'll enter the value as minus 12 kilonewton per meter and then I'll go ahead and select the uh, elements on which I want to apply it and then click apply. Once uh, we have applied the uh, superimposed dead loads, now we are ready to define the uh, end and pieces load. So I'll click close here and as you can see on your screens, on this uh, stage tab we have the uh, tendon definition. Basically you can locate the same under load, precess loads and then under tendon property tendon profile and then tendon precess loads. So basically defining tendon has three steps involved. The first step is defining a tendon property. I'll click on tendon property and click add. Here I'll enter the tendon name as web because I'm going to apply them in the, in the web of the girders. Then I'll select the type of uh, uh, tendon I'm using. It can be pretension, post tension or external tendons. Since it's a post tension uh, uh, structure, I'll go with internal post tension. Material I'll select as A416 to 70 low relaxation as I defined. And then I'll select the total tendon area, which uh, is from, if I click on that button with three dots, I can select the strand diameter and I can enter the number of strands that make up this tendon and then click OK. So you can see that the program has computed the nom nominal uh, tendon area and added here. Then I can enter the duct diameter which is 0.103 meters and the relaxation coefficient. I'll assign this as per CEB FIP and use uh, the coefficient as 5%. Then you can see the ultimate and the yield strength of the uh, tendon material are given here. The curvature friction factor, wobble friction factor to be accounted since it's a uh, post tension are given here. We, have, we are also considering uh, anchorage slip at the two ends of about six millimeters and uh, we, are, we can consider either bonded or unbonded tendons. So I'll click OK. So we, we are going ahead with bonded tendons. Then the next step is defining the tendon profile. So if you place your uh, cursor there it will show you what the icon represents. So I'll define the tendon profile now. I'll click add and here I'll enter the tendon name that is T underscore L for the left web. I'll select the tendon property that I defined and then I'll use single select tool and select the sections through which I want to apply the tendons. So basically I'm using this uh, through these two uh, members. I can select the input type as 3D, the curve as spline and then um, if there happens to be number of tendons passing the same location or same profile, uh, you can multiply the effect of a single tendon by checking on typical tendon and ent entering the number of tendons that follow the same profile. But right now since we have defined the, all the strands into one tendon uh, in the uh, tendon property definition, so we will not be doing this here. Now. Uh, we, we, are, we have reached a point where we need to enter the coordinates for this tendon and for this uh, you can, if I bring this dialog box right here, you can see uh, we have a spreadsheet which has the tendon coordinates. Bring this right here. So what I'll do is, I'll just select the coordinates that I have for the tendon, I'll hit control C, come to the program and then click here once and hit control V. 
once we have entered the coordinates, I will fix the point where the curvature is changing and then I will tell the program these points are defined with respect to which coordinate. Uh, basically, I know that uh, my uh, elevations for the tendons are defined with respect to top of the section and I can register this with the program also by clicking on the profile insertion point is the ith end of element number. Now I don't remember the element number so I'll just click here, go to that element and click again there and enter the element number 1. Then I'll just click apply and you can see the tendon created. I'll repeat the same thing for the right web. So I'll change the name from T underscore L to R and I can either modify the parameters, uh, the uh, coordinates right here or I can just delete the entire thing copy from the spreadsheet and paste it right here fix the points of uh, change in curvature and then click OK so you can see the two tendons are defined in no time uh, if I turn around the solid view you can see the tendons are neatly placed in the webs of the two in the two webs Now I'll uh, move on to the third step that is to define the tendon pre-stress. I'll click on this icon, select the load case name as PS, I'll select the load group name as PS and there here I'll select uh, the uh, two tendons on which I want to apply this load. So I'll uh, put them under the selected list and I'll choose if I want to apply, apply it as a stress or a force, I'll choose uh, stress and while stressing at both ends you can specify which end it was checked first because that will affect the friction losses in the tendon so uh, I'm choosing first checking is at both ends so this means uh, they are checked simultaneously from the two ends and I can enter the uh, values I, I have this value in MPA which is Newton per millimeter square so what I'll do is change the units to Newton and millimeters and then go ahead and enter the value which is 1330 MPA and 1330 MPA. So you can see different unit systems can be very easily used in the program. Now uh, when we do the actual post tensioning in the side, you, you can uh, decide whether the tendons are grouted in the same stage as you are post tensioning or you want it to be grouted in the following construction stages. So here we'll enter one that is ground the tendons uh, after the pre-stressing stage by these many number of stages. So this means if I activate the tendons or apply the tendon pre-stress load in stage 3, the grounding will be done in stage 4 if I enter the number here as 2. So this means if uh, I uh, post tension the tendons in stage 3, that they will be grounded in stage 5. So uh, you must get this thing uh, correct. So I am grouting it in the next uh, construction stage. So therefore I have entered grouting after one stage and then click add. And then click close here. Now I have defined uh, all the uh, static loads onto the structure uh, and to save time and lay more emphasis on the construction stage analysis I will not be uh, going through the live load definition in this model. Uh, rather than that, I will have some more things to uh, show it to you uh, during the during this uh, session. So uh, now I will go ahead and define the construction sequence, and it will be and you will see that it is exactly the same way I laid it out on that uh, uh, slide. So I'll click here select generate and enter the construction stage name which is CS and I want to have full construction stage 1, 2, 4 as suffix I'll check on to save step uh, uh, stage results and if any additional steps I've used click OK and now I'll go and uh, customize or modify each and every construction stage so I'll double click on it I'll enter the duration as 21 days I'll click on the element tab, select the group uh, uh, representing the pier and abutment and I'll activate them with a stage of, uh, with an age of 30 days. This means when the 
day one the uh, construction stage is uh, construction is starting the pier and abutment are already in place and being cured for 30 days then you can come to the boundary tab and you can select the boundary uh, group you can click add to activate this boundary and come to load tab and select sulfate thumb rule of my civil construction stage analysis is sulfate must always be activated at first step of first construction stage and thereafter if you have some members being activated in the later construction stages, the program will automatically compute their sulfate and add it when the elements are activated in the field. So uh, do not try to simulate the sulfate of some members in uh, the first construction stage through point loads and then later on activate the span and activate the sulfate. Uh, this will lead to incorrect results. So you should uh, activate the sulfate no matter what happens in the first stage, even though your elements are activated in the following steps. Then click apply here and I'll move to the second construction stage and this construction stage is for 14 days. So previous 21 out of uh, those 21 days, 7 days were given for putting of the form work and 14 days were given for pouring of the concrete. So in stage 2, when the, uh, when the span which are cast in situ are activated, they are actually 14 day old. So I let activate them with an age of 14. And then no new boundary has to be added. And on load tab, I'll activate the diaphragm load onto the structure. Then click apply. So now for, uh, the span is already 14 day old, 14 days old, and now this duration is 14 more. So by the time we come to construction stage 3, the span has gained is a required strength of 28 days. And then I can just make this stage of this uh, day, uh, day uh, duration as 1. And under loads, activate the post tension uh, or the pre stress loads. And then click apply. And the final construction stage will be for 10,000 days. And I'll just activate the superimposed dead load onto this stage. And since I have uh, mentioned that the grouting will be done in this following construction stage, this is a stage in which the program will automatically grout the tenants. And then I'll click OK and click Close. Uh, now, since uh, we have uh, we are done with all the definition part, I can go to the analysis and select construction stage analysis control where you can click on time dependent effect and see the time dependent effect controls that are there. You can choose whether you want to have creep and shrinkage at all. If you want to have, you want to have just creep, just shrinkage or both. You can control the iteration steps here. You can consider the tendon tension loss effects for creep and shrinkage. You can consider tendon tension loss effect for elastic shortening. You can consider uh, variation in compressive strength. If you want the effect of uh, uh, time dependent uh, material and on elastic modulus to be carried forward to post construction stage then you can certainly check this on and consider that as well. We can also consider the conf uh, rebar confinement effect by checking this option. Right now I'll be sticking to this default and then all the loading that you will apply in this construction stage model will be lumped together under CS dead load, that is construction stage dead loads. But if you want to uh, extract a particular loading out of this uh, loved loading, you can choose that loading and put it under CS erection load, that is, uh, that will be uh, determined, uh, that will fall into the category of varying surface and uh, utilities. But right now, what I'll do is uh, stick, uh, put everything lumped together in the CS dead loads and uh, you can choose to consider the concrete force effects in the construct, uh, during the uh, construction stage analysis and you can also uh, uh, choose to see the results for uh, each and every part of composite sections but we are not using uh, composite sections here so this will not affect uh, our analysis and you can check on consider initial tangent, uh, tangent displacement for your structures. Basically, then the program will be able to give you the 
uh, chamber deformation, it will be able to give you uh, the cumulative deformation and it will also give you the deformation due to the loading that is activated in that particular step. And I'll quickly go through these results. Then I'll click OK here. And uh, as you can see, there is just uh, the span length is 35 meters. So the analysis will be, the results will be uh, given at five different points I, J, half, one fourth, and three fourth of the length. And uh, uh, certainly that will not be acceptable because the results will actually be at uh, uh, quite far intervals. So what I'll do is select the members and uh, uh, do pay attention to the step as this is the beauty of the software. I'll select these members after defining everything that is applied and then divide this into let's say seven pieces and click apply. The, uh, when I've done that, and if I go back to the groups, you'll see that the group has already been updated and is uh, with the divided elements and the number is updated to 14. If you come here and see the uh, uh, loading value, if I right click and display on the screen, it's also been divided and distributed throughout the length. If you see the tenant profiles, uh, if I right click and go to properties, you can see that the number of uh, assigned elements have been automatically updated. So the unlike other softwares which uh, suffer from these kinds of drawback during construction stage analysis or uh, once they have defined the groups and uh, loadings and other uh, uh, parameters and they make any changes, they have to go back, keep a record of all the changes and update the groups uh, uh, one by one. But the program is intelligent enough and takes care of these kinds of uh, changes. Let me end display engines and display the loadings and now we are good to perform analysis I click perform analysis and save then save this with some name and click save and the analysis has been completed and as you can see it just took about like 2.1 seconds uh, very simple analysis uh, simple model and I can cycle through the construction sequence by clicking on this um, text uh, field and select CS1 and I can choose to display the boundary conditions. So I can choose to display supports. So you can see the supports activated. It is an exact replica of what you saw in the slides. Second step, the span is activated. And third step, oh, let me display the tendon profiles. Miscellaneous tendon profile, uh, tendon profile points. You can see the tendons coming into picture. And the full stage, you can see the loading coming onto the structure. Let me display it onto the screen. You can come to loads and select all the element beam loads to be displayed. So, in this way, you can see the construction sequence, how it has been laid down. And uh, now, what I'll do is switch to I'll just clear this display. Let me just undisplay this. Okay. So now uh, let me cycle through some results real quick. Uh, coming to post CS, I'll just uh, first verify whether my loading data is correct or not. So right click, go to uh, reactions. Reaction forces, select cell fade, and then click on this button to generate the table real quick for cell fade. And now, if you put together uh, the all the structure cell fade, it should match this value. Let me scale it down to kilo newtons, or uh, uh, better if I scale it down to kips. So you can uh, do the summation by multiplying the cross section area and the material density. You can get this and just verify that the loading is correct or not. Then uh, I will right click go to deformation, displacement contours and then just because of self field let me see how much is the deformation of the structure. You can see it's about uh, 7 millimeters. Let me change it to inches and you can see it's about like 0.23 inches, 0.29, approximately 0.3 inches. So basically there's no uh, uh, highly undeformed uh, shape or abnormal deformation. So this means all the nodes and members are properly connected. Uh, 
uh, let me uh, move on to the forces and come to beam diagrams and here just for a cell field let's see how much is the pending movement value and as you can see this foot uh, kips foot foot kips you see this value so I mean uh, and this graph also looks the diagram also looks uh, pretty correct because uh, it's, uh, it's it has interior support and this is due to the cell fate you can expect this kind of diagram hence our modeling is correct now I'll move on to construction stage results and view the results one by one so I'll come to the first construction stage uh, which is which has just peer in it uh, let me see uh, from second construction stage you can see the results for CS dead loads that will sum all the dead loads onto the structure which is primarily this is cell fit for now and you can notice the values that are shown here and uh, once I go to CS summation and click apply you can see the values are same because the elements are just activated on the first step but if I come to the last step that means when the age is 28 days you can see the uh, variation in the bending moment value and this is where the time dependent effects kicks in because if I go to first step the elements are just activated so there's just self acting now due to the time dependent effect you can see the values are changed now coming to this third construction stage where we bring in the uh, tendons and you can see the bending moment as reduced as expected and then if I click apply on the last step you can see the uh, bending moment slightly changing and the uh, last construction step oh, sorry last construction stage first step is uh, where you have added the uh, superimposed red load onto the structure you can see the bending moment and when you come to the last step and click apply you'll see the increase in the bending moment because of the time dependent effects kicking in now Similarly, you can see the results for each and every construction stage for deformations also, displacement contours. You can come to displacement contours and go to first construction stage. And you do summation loading. You can see the displacement that is occurring at different construction stage, at first step, last step. Then you come to third construction stage. You can see the time dependent effect playing its role with the post tension tendons coming in the displacement displacement is reduced to a certain bit but when you come to the final construction stage and final step click apply you'll see that this is uh, the def overall deformation that is occurring in like 10,000 uh, days I mean 10,037 days this is the total duration of construction stages and you can choose to see uh, the uh, these are the camber uh, values that you are looking at you can see the current step uh, displacement. This means the displacement that will occur due to the due to all the loads that are activated during this stage only. If you want to see the real uh, displacement, that is the summation or the cumulative displacement, you can click apply, and this is the cumulative displacement of the structure. So the program is able to generate all these different uh, results for construction staging uh, for uh, deformations and forces, and same thing can be done for stresses also. You can choose beam stress precess concrete section. You can select uh, in different locations on the along the order fiber and uh, choose, let's say, for top fiber for uh, sigma xx or sigma xx summation. You can check off the deformation and see the stress values at the top position, at the bottom fiber position. So you can see the reverse graphs. You can use solid fill. So for top fiber and bottom fiber, you can see the values. And uh, uh, due to time limitations, uh, I'll not be going into the uh, the design features of uh, my civil for pieces concrete sections. We'll be taking up uh, that up as a future topic. Uh, but right now, I'll be sticking to these results. So all these uh, uh, results are, as I mentioned, uh, can be extracted in uh, spreadsheet also. So you can right click. Go to let's say forces beam diagrams you can click on this button with three dots you can select which construction stage which step you want to see um, and then click apply the program will generate those results for you um, also you can see uh, the tendon tension loss effects you can come to post cs now and under results you can go 
to uh, result tables and uh, go to tendon and select tendon loss and here you can select the tendon strand and which construction stage you want to see the result let's say a final construction stage when all the losses have occurred click apply and you will see the values for uh, uh, tendon stress losses let me change it to kips and h so you can have a better idea about the values that are there and the losses that are happening so you can see the stresses after immediate losses oh uh, if you remember i applied the values in mpa so let it be newton and millimeter square so i applied 1330 mpa since it's a post tension strand so due to immediate uh, friction losses or sorry immediate uh, relaxation loss and uh, uh, Increase slip, you will get this kinds of uh, losses. Then there is elastic deformation. This is the ratio between the stress loss after elastic loss and the intermediate loss. The pre shrinkage losses that are occurring during the long term, the relaxation losses that are occurring during the long term. Then the, this is the ratio of uh, stresses after all losses and immediate losses. So you can generate these kinds of table very easily. It can be generated for stresses as well as for forces. No, uh, and uh, it doesn't matter if you apply these stresses as stress values or force values we can still uh, uh, extract the result for two either of the two so let's say to newton you'll see this kind of loss values same thing can be animated in a table format you can go to results and select tendon tension loss graph and you can choose the tendon let's say tendon uh, uh, for the right web and then click animate you will see the steps are changing and the program is showing you the tendon losses in different construction stage and you can read these values and make out whether the uh, um, these graphs makes sense or not and verify your tendon profile so uh, this was all i wanted to share with you in the uh, webinar uh, of uh, box girders with construction stage analysis but before i wrap up this session let me quickly share one more aspect of uh, my civil here let me just uh, go to the second file. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if I summarize uh, all the modeling steps here, so we started by defining materials in section, then we create the structural uh, model by creating nodes and elements and providing boundary condition then we define structure groups boundary groups load groups load input and then apply tendons and did the pre-stressing or post tensioning then we define construction stages and uh, uh, the time dependent material properties can be defined at the end or at the beginning and then we perform the analysis so you can see that uh, this is a simplified approach to construction stage analysis and this can be further simplified by the use of wizards that are there in the software. So if you see here, all these steps can be summarized uh, by MyDecible wizards, where you can just define the material and section property and the wizard will take care of the entire definition of uh, structural model, defining groups, uh, creating construction sequence, and entering tendons and everything. We'll be done here. All you need to do is then define the time dependent material link and then perform the analysis. And to show you how simple it is, I'll go into the program itself, open a new file here and I'll go to model structure wizard and then uh, there are several different uh, wizards for uh, segmental construction based on the type of construction methodology you can pick and choose uh, the ones which are uh, favorite uh, or, I mean favorable to your uh, uh, project you can use either incremental launching uh, balance can lever bridge um, or movi uh, movable scaffolding system or fully showed method of construction. Uh, since uh, what we did today is uh, is very similar to span by span construction, so I'll show you how you can generate uh, a bridge in no time using MSS Wizard. So what you can do is uh, uh, this Wizard has three tabs: model, section, tendon. On model tab, you can specify the longitudinal profile like. Uh, what's the bridge material so i'll just quickly define or rather i will just import it from the previous model the material property that i'll use click close here so 
this is the uh, material then you can define what is the span length you want to have I will have four spans uh, one nine six eight and two spans of two three six four and then one span of one nine six eight so they are unequal spans and right now I'm going with the default values if you want to consider a, a, a radius of curvature you can include that you can specify along the longitudinal uh, along the longitudinal axis where you want to have your fixed support so you can specify that uh, location from the origin and specify which uh, span it is and then how many uh, segments you want to divide in a span so you can uh, choose that number here I'm using 20 then where you have the cold joint basically when you have the uh, span by span construction then you construct uh, one span and then create some portion of the second span so that the beam is never simply supported as an overhang there and then you have the second uh, span uh, attaching at this location so this particular location becomes your cold joint so you can specify what is the uh, distance of uh, this cold joint from the uh, previous support and then you can specify the anchorage so when you have uh, the tendons which are running through the webs you can specify how much then should be given for overlapping and anchorage and uh, uh, you can specify uh, or where those tendons should be anchored how deep inside the uh, previous span and you can specify uh, what is your diaphragm thickness at the supports then how what should be your stage duration and what should be the initial member age and what should be the weight of your movable supporting system so basically initial member age is uh, how many days you want to give uh, uh, give it for setting of the concrete and before you remove the formwork so that is the age here since uh, it's a segment by segment construction for the span uh, I mean we are giving it like five days of uh, curing before we remove the formwork from there so when the span will be activated it will be a five day uh, uh, with co uh, age concrete and then we'll continue the construction and then they will gain on age so this is just for demo purpose we are just uh, starting with some values here I'll move on to the section tab here you can define the this uh, one cell or two cell uh, section you can define the different sections for center for joint and for diaphragm and then I'll come to the tendon tab and here you can define the tendon layout you can select from uh, uh, different type of uh, uh, layouts and control their variation you can have it in one layer or two layer only thing you need to do is enter these uh, 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 the parameters just by looking at the uh, bitmap image I'll just define the tendon property here real quick uh, let's say web the same as what we just defined um, general tendon area I'll just use uh, the same as previous the depth diameter uh, let's say uh, it was about 10 centimeters so this will be about 4 inch um, then relaxation coefficient and all the other parameters remaining as default I'll click OK and click close so I've defined the tendon, material, uh, tendon property and I'll be grouting the tendons every one step that means uh, not at the precessing step but in the following stage I'll be grouting it and I've given it the two layer formation and this is the distance and then I'll, when I click OK the, you will see the program has generated this all for you if I come to works tab you will see all the data there and then let me uh, display all the support conditions and cycle through the construction sequence so I'll come to first stage and let me zoom out a bit here so that you can see the full model being created and fix the zoom here so you can see at first step this is the uh, roller end and this is a fixed support and the this is the distance given for uh, uh, cold joint I mean the overhang then second step we'll have the next span erected and this will still be the fixed support and this will be the uh, roller end then third step we'll change the support condition from uh, fixed to roller and make the other end as fixed then you come to fourth stage you'll have uh, this end as fixed and the other end as roller and then you have the final construction stage where you can add your superimposed dead loads and tendon processes and if I uh, just display the tendon profiles here 
you can see 48 tendons are generated I can choose to click display and you can see them onto the screen they have been applied uh, during throughout the construction sequence we undisplay it so very basic similar uh, simple geometry uh, uh, span by span construction you can see it can be uh, done in no time in the software uh, just needs little customization here and there. You can see all the boundary conditions, structure group and load groups are automatically created. So uh, the program saves a lot of time on the iterative steps that you have to perform. And now you can still go in and modify your uh, uh, set of, uh, uh, or rather I should say you can customize the bridge as per your real project and uh, go ahead and do the analysis. So this is where the software uh, 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 power is uh, utilized and um, you can see in no time you can generate different kind of segmental bridges and consider uh, all the construction stage analysis and time dependent effects so uh, all right uh, the recorded video is done and uh, I guess uh, some, of, some of you guys might have a you know like question about the interface is kind of different from the, uh, the these days uh, about you know this video like explain well uh, from the scratch and now uh, we are going to have you know a pre-stress concrete bridge uh, design and load rating stuff on May uh, as well so but like if you need to request uh, more like information please let us know and uh, I will finish uh, this uh, sessions and uh, thanks for coming here again and um, if you guys have time uh, please you know in lower uh, tomorrow's uh, webinar and uh, please uh, you know enjoy that thank you bye